very pleased to be here um, to talk about um, the role of geography. And hopefully that'll be key in your thoughts of what, uh, what you're going to cover later on today and in, in the days ahead as well. So, this is what we live in. I think the geography happens everywhere. We're sat in a room in a pub. Um, in part of London, you know, everything we do, even if it's something virtual, lives on a server somewhere. So geography inherently plays a role in what we're doing. And particularly with the tasks that we've been talking about today, we've been talking about it's, it's somewhere. There's something happening in a, with schools that are located somewhere with their communities and everything else. So having good geography is uh, key to what, uh, what we're trying to achieve here. But of course, all the, so, so how, how does all the survey play into that? Well, with the National Maritime Authority, and for 200 years, a bit more than 220, 220 something years, We've been making maps, we've been making uh, products that look something like this, and you recognize them probably from either walking or if you've worked with our data at all. Which comes on to this, really, which for the last 20 years it's always been about digital data. Everything we do, everything we hold is in some sort of digital form, and it's, it's highly accurate and it's very sort of attributed and um, designed for local authorities, for utility companies, and all those sort of people rely on geography to be able to use that data to a high degree of accuracy, like the land registry, or like that. So typically our customers are using our data in this way. The paper stuff that you see that you walk around with is our consumer end, and that's only a very small part of our business, as the majority of people are working with this digital set of data. But of course, in the last few years, there's uh, eight, but um, there's, been all, there's been a great deal of excitement around geography. That there's been all these people like Google have come along with Google Maps, something that was probably fairly inaccessible, certainly a digital element to everybody in their hands, having them on their smartphones or even on, on your computers. It was actually kind of hard and a bit rubbish, to be honest. But these guys came along, Google, followed by Yahoo and Bing, have made um, geography and mapping really accessible. But they do it for their own purposes, of course, and they do it in a certain style and what they expect to see, particularly initially Google's Case, it was all about how much advertising or another outlet for their advertising in any case. And of course, there's OpenStreetMap, which is a crowdsourced um, set of geography people go around with GPSs or digitize off aerial imagery, imagery to create an open data set that everyone can use. So it's made the world really exciting, particularly for national mapping agencies, about how they make their data available to everyone. And of course, it's not just about the mapping side of things, it's about collecting geography data. So some of you may have come across the names that are on the screen here. Um, but there are, again, other crowdsourced ways of accessing data, particularly during emergencies or um, humanitarian reasons as well, um, that these have sort of come about and come to the fore. So there's a lot going on in terms of geography, in terms of data that's being collected and what is available for everybody to just be able to use. But there's still an element of that, and it's great having all this data collected, but how do you trust that data? How do you know that what, you're, what is being collected is sort of the degree of accuracy that you're interested in, or um, is maintained? You know, there may have been, there may have been very exciting that OpenStreetMap, um, who I love, by the way, so this isn't a criticism, it's more of a, a reality check, that there may have been, um, that data may have been collected once, five years ago, has it been updated, has that been changed? So it's important to also have some of the around making sure that everything's maintained and kept up to date, particularly when geography becomes a, a matter, a, a legal matter as well, that those records are maintained and, and, and kept. So the value of having an organisation that is consistently doing that and it's written down, it's mandated to do that, is as important as the volume of people doing, doing crowdsourced information. Because sometimes you get things like this, it seems a little bit unfair, but this did happen. So this is the island of Jura, of Scotland, that I think about a year or so ago suddenly disappeared off Google Maps. They did fix it the next day or very soon after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how many people know this box and BBC picked that up. So it can be, you know, knowing that that data is good and authoritative is, is, is a value. We do this sort of stuff at our, our greatest level. So we do very accurate building capture, boundary capture, because of course the land registry uses those to be able to maintain their records, etc., etc. But of course, that is also data that we can all use as well. I'm not sure what's on there. And we do sort of, uh, not us as an OS, but we as, as consumers, as, de as developers. Oh, sorry. I've just put a few of them up so I don't skip past it too much. Oh, oh it does it. <laughs> I should have paid attention to my slides. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it. Anyway, the point is, we do, <laughs> the point is, right, no, 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 if it moves, we'll just have to live with the speed, okay? The point is, 
we build web pages, we build mobile apps, uh, we use hype data, uh, and we use videos, we use things, we, we've heard about big data and all those sorts of things. So we use this data in many, many contexts. So getting that data and being able to use that data is important. And that's all the survey, clearly because um, we want people to use our data. We do this in a number of ways. We take our license data, we've got open data, we've got all the APIs and SDKs and all the tools that developers need to be able to get that really excellent data that I've just mentioned previously. And I'm just going to talk very briefly, very quickly, about some of the free and the open data side of things. So we do have a whole lot of licensed products, really high quality data, that stuff that you saw in a very detailed picture that you saw before. That you can get that as a, as a on trial licenses and it's very easy to be able to, to use. But we also have a series of open data and initiatives to get people using that data more, which is what Gervation is all about. So our open data sets, you can, any of you can go away and, and use without any restrictions. Uh, look something like this. I won't go through them all right now, but there's a mixture here of things that give you context and things so you can put other points of information over and things that you can interact with and use. So for example, um, you can have the digital terrain model if you want, or you can have all the boundaries. So if you want to have information related to boundaries, you have all the district borough, etc. boundaries in the UK and postcodes and things like that. So you can get hold of that data and make use of it as you want, which is different from just being able to see it as a backdrop and not being able to interact with it. Finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about very briefly is we uh, we also uh, if you have Gervation, which include uh, which encourages people to use data through a sort of social enterprise initiatives. So we're very familiar with people wanting to want to not steal from delivery sites um, in, the, in wanting to be able to um, use our data, but in a different context that we normally do, which is uh, with businesses. So here we've run six of these so challenges where people go through a, a, a sort of selection process um, and an education process, but they're all built around um, initiatives that, that are, are social enterprise themes. So for example, how can we transform neighborhoods in Britain? Um, so probably that ties in quite well with, with this, what we're doing here. How can we, um, how can we improve, uh, or, or how can we improve traffic in Britain? How can we feed stuff? So we've done a few of these, and various people come through this process and have ended up with a whole lot of money to help them um, on their startup. This is the current one which just finished, uh, which just closed just in January, uh, which was about how we project the lifestyles. Again, it ties in very nicely. So we're very familiar with the with the context that you're trying to work here, and um, we believe that location plays a really strong part in what most of you will want to do in some context. So that's what we're here for, and um, you know, any questions throughout today and beyond, uh, we're more than welcome to talk with you about. Ian, can I ask you a yeah. uh, broader question? So I either answer now or for you say, no, we'll pop that and maybe, maybe come back to it. Is there a way of showing, sorry, that's me, is there a way of showing um, uh, a map of, a, of mapping a local area that might make more people more likely to walk? I know there's no such thing as a neutral map, is there? There's a, no, no, no. no. Because <laughs> anyone's objective, but they're never really objective. There's always a degree of so we map, we map, uh, so let's put that in context for a moment. We map 99.6% of everything that's physically on the ground, and that's maintained on a, on a uh, six, I think, uh, within six weeks or six months. I don't know if there's a time scale there, but so we capture all this stuff, and it's how people use that. So absolutely, there are many people who've taken that sort of data and tried to show how can we how can we demonstrate that to somebody else to emphasise how they might be walked. So that's it. What's what's really grown out of what they called neo geography which is the stuff that really uh, grew from Google bringing out its maps and so on. So this is, um, it's a, a new definition of the term neo-geography, but it was around people who never used geography now beginning to create really exciting maps. So there's some great uh, designers and developers who have created mapping for all sorts of reasons. I'm sure if I, if I was given an hour or so, I could find some examples, which I probably should have done, which would probably illustrate walking routes and things like that. Yeah, just what you're saying inspired me to to, to start thinking about that. What about citizen? I mean, what is the role of the citizen the citizen map? There's a program on BBC Four yesterday about just this. Oh really? Oh, it's it's it's, yeah, yeah, it's about mapping the void. It's like, but, but I mean, how citizens can well how they how they're actually showing changes, showing what matters to them, and so on. And it might be really useful. I think, it would be what that's trying to do. Yeah. So I mean, whilst we whilst we capture what is actually there, that. Our specification is very much related to, to sort of infrastructure and, and property boundaries and, and things like that. Um, but what actually matters to the citizen might be something else, and it might be something that they're going to be collecting, either to then show on top of the actual 
they are on the ground that we can capture. Or, um, or they could be sort of yeah, creating their own data sets of like capturing and things like that. So, so we give a context almost, and because that citizen mapping might be something that then needs that to be able to illustrate where it is the world that walks around it. Okay, okay. So it could be helpful with that. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some very powerful citizen mapping, very powerful. The open street map people that I showed on the previous slide is a sort of very powerful example where it's gone global with that. Lucia Haiti, for example, which was, came out yes. of the, the, the Kenyan uh, elections when there was a lot of uh, trouble and people reporting what was going on locals. And, and that's grown up to be used in other. Um, Sorry. To be used in all, all manner of other emergencies and humanitarian issues as well. So, yeah, the, the citizen mapping part of the data collection is very important. Yeah, that, that program on Radio 4 that I play is absolutely worth listening to if you're interested in citizen mapping. It's really well done. Mapping the volume tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, um, that's but, but, I mean, the, the, the five, the, the, the five talks that you've just heard, I think, encourage us to be magpies to some extent. Sort of take from that anything that you think might be uh, might be helpful, especially when we're uh, when we're doing the development this afternoon. Next.